to live in. That's the beauty of this world. We meet different types of people across the globe who share their value system, their culture, their beliefs with us. So let me tell you about my own experiences. Once I was sitting in the class with multicultural people from China, Russia, from Poland. These people shared their own experiences and they said that Indians are really warm. I wanted to know more about my country because as human beings, we all need validation. So one of them told me that India is a beautiful country. I told them, tell me more about it. So that there is one thing which is so different in India, which is that you have beautiful beaches and you have cows on the beaches. I was completely shattered. Maybe this is the way people actually differentiate us from others. Maybe they would have seen this beauty in these beaches in this way. We, uh, beauty is something which, uh, which, uh, which belongs to the eyes of the beholder. We all take it in different ways. It is our perception. And because we have this multicultural diversity, we know more about each other in this world. And this actually leads to a broader perspective of the world. Not only that, when we meet people of different cultures, we learn a lot. What if, if the world becomes a big one culture? I believe it would be very boring. What do you think? Yeah, yeah. wonderful, Kavaljit. Okay, Brahma, any feedback first of all from your side? It was, it was good to <coughs> show that there should be diversity versus similarity and it makes the world more colorful and you are example of the class where the way they look at India very differently beautifully beautiful way you want to call it I just felt that the, the phrase, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder, it should come earlier. Because you're saying it at the tail end. So if it can come earlier, and then it can tie it up to, your, to the topic, it will be more, more effective. And but there was something missing, but I, I can't think of it at the moment. There's something that that you need to, because the topic is, the beauty lies in the diversity, diversity, right? So that diversity, you need to give uh, more, more examples, more, uh, elaborate more. So that is a bit uh, missing. Uh, Megna got some comments to add. Yeah, yeah, yeah Megna, your point. Uh, yeah, sir. That's what uh, I, I was also feeling diversity was missing. Uh, so this topic it revolves around different cultures, religions and beliefs and customs that people follow. So when you gave an example, the apt example would be like there's so many different religions, so many festivals, so many variety of foods. And the beauty of India is we are like one melting pot. As per Jawaharlal Nehru, we are a melting pot, right? Why? Because we all sing together, we celebrate a Hindu celebrating uh, the thing. You don't get into more religion, but basically we celebrate across a lot of festivals that brings about diversity, knowing about uh, each other's food, customs, and how we learn each other and adapt to different cultures and all that. That could add more value to this topic is something I felt from uh, example perspective. Very well started off, just that example could be relevant, then it would add more effectiveness to the topic. That's all. Because of the term diversity, especially. Nothing else than that. Yeah. Yep. Very true. Yep. I just felt that is, I mean, like, like, in terms of diversity, there could have been a lot of examples, interesting exam examples, which could have been given. Like, 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 like you know, for example, if, you, if you're working in any organization where you've got um, a lot of bunch of people from, from different backgrounds, and uh, and you know any humorous instances which which might have had, had happened because of you not understanding their language or they're not understanding your native language. So you know, uh, uh, so, so I mean uh, th th this could be uh, be one area, one way to present it and uh, in any in humorous instances and, and then you could have given an example. That's the beauty which lies in this country is that it, it is so diverse that although we don't understand 
each other's language, culture, or sometimes we get jumbled in each other's um, uh, customs. Sometimes we also offend them. Sometimes we also get offended. But in the end, that's what a family is all about. That, that, that is having differences, but living together under the same roof here. Okay, okay Meghna, are you ready? Sure, sir, sure, yeah. All right. See. So, so your topic is some people come in our lives as blessing and some as lessons. Some people come in our lives as blessing and some as lessons. Every individual that enters your life enters with a purpose to either teach you or to mold you to be better. The point and the perspective that each individual should have is a learning shaping your life, taking it as a learning experience. There are multiple instances in our life. If we just go back our memory lane, there are multiple people whom have, who have helped you to be better and who have molded you to be better. The difference only is one who helps you is always one who criticizes you to become better and one who hardens you and tells you gooder things and nicer things about you doesn't really help you. They just want you to be where you are. When people say you're good, doing good enough in life, that means it is good for them. But is it good for you? You have to decide the good and make it and take it to the level of when it becomes the great. So let me share you a small example in my life that turned out to a blessing. This very particular person in my life came as a mentor where I didn't even know my own potential. This particular person told me, Meghna, you are made for something more better. I think you're wasting your life, just limiting your uh, you know, uh, skills. Then I said, what do I need to do in order to enhance my skill set? He said, join Toastmasters, start giving speeches, become a better orator with time and increase your vocabulary. And this particular person is none other than Toastmaster Swapnil, who's my mentor, who actually helped me in the course of time and came as a blessing to shape me to, to be the person I am today. And I'm really honored. But there were other people in my life on contrary who actually came as a teaching lesson, my colleagues in office, who always told me I'm doing good when I was doing not that great. And they always wanted to be uh, uh, ensure that where I am, they wanted to me to stay at the place I am. But my uh, particular team leader told, Meghna, you're not doing good enough. And I learned the lesson that I should not have a comparison as colleagues. I should have myself as a comparison and a benchmark where I enhance by increasing my own skills, build my own knowledge base and things like that. So in life, you happen to meet multiple people who can come as a lesson as well as a blessing. So it always matters is one thing that you take each and every experience of, uh, in your life as a learning lesson and grow. Because ultimately what really matters in life is growth with each and every experience that comes as a learning lesson. Thank you. Over to you. Oh. Wonderful, Meghna. Okay, feedback, uh, Brahma. There was a good balance in the sense that you were talking about blessings and those who are giving us lessons. With the blessings I like the way you started in the in the beginning where you said that there are two kinds of people, those who are actually helping us and those who are actually not helping us. And then those who are helping us is those who are blessing us by giving opportunities for us, opening windows for us. And so on. Whereas the other one is the one that is either flattering us or worse, making sure that we remain where we are. So it was a good balance and uh, it was quite, quite well, well said. Only one more thing is that your bosses, you still need to work on them. Uh -huh. You still need to... Because, you see, when... Yeah, there's how, a lot of books. It's been long. Again, I lost touch with table <laughs> topics, I guess. Again, no, no, I you, 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 are, you are still there. You're, you're still better. You're better now. But what I would suggest is that... Because when you're talking about blessings, that's one point, right? And the other one, the lessons, is another point, right? So, when, the moment you know that you're going to say at the opposite point or the a different point, that's when you need to pause. So you, you have to internalize it. Okay, now I'm going to talk about something else. Let me pause. Yep. And then start. The pause is only one second. Yes, one sir. Second. I, I realize. I, I will get on to it, sir. Yeah. Yep. I, like in fact, I also had the similar point. That, that it was just a pausing. Although, I mean, your, your, the, the rate of speaking was way better. 
as compared to earlier on, but uh, this is just one area which even I was suggesting. Same thing. And how are you, Himanshu? It's been a long time since I met you. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh, He's definitely grown healthier, I can see. <laughs> no, healthier and, and, and a different group. Like, like he's got a different uh, feature altogether. I couldn't recognize him first. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you, Noin sir, once again. Uh, I was actually wondering when I can, can get the time to join the uh, table topic session. I was not able to because uh, of my exams and all. Mm -hmm. And still, today I was a bit free, so I decided that, yeah, I have to meet Naveen Sir. It's been quite a while. <laughs> Wonderful. Welcome. You're welcome. And welcome to us, Master Jethi. Welcome to us, Master Bhavneet. How are you all? Hello, sir. Hello, everybody. I'm just Hello, getting sir. my house. <laughs> yeah. Hello, all right. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, uh, Bhavneet. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm Toastmaster from Ludhiana. I am the... Relatively no wise. I joined in January mid only. And oh, uh, uh, DTM uh, Brahma Kumar, uh, sir, he was there uh, at, at, at our last weekend's meeting. So I hope that he remembers a bit about the members. And I promised well, him that I will join the this Friday session. I was look, really looking forward to it. I just had some guests, so that's why I was a bit late for 10 minutes. I apologize yeah. for that. No, no, it's all right. It's all right. Uh, all right. I can give the next topic, but I have Thank a you. special request from Anwaljit. Uh, I want you to look at the, observe the language used by them and see if they can use some words that are more powerful. Because I noticed that words have a certain uh, effect. Like you have a tendency to use certain quotations that crystallizes the thought, you know. So if they can do that, it'll be better. So uh, I'm calling, going to call uh, Toastmaster Bhavneet. Are you are you ready? Uh, yes, sir. I yeah, hope okay, I yeah. am able to do it. Uh, some of the topics today are going to be tough because uh, we have people preparing for contests, but it's a good practice. So I'm taking one quote from Shakespeare here. It's a very popular one. Privity is the soul of wit. Privity is the soul of wit. I'll put it in the... Chat and over to you. Okay. Thank you, Toastmaster, sir. And the topic is brevity is the soul of it. Okay. This uh, quote, as it is given by Shakespeare, I really agree with this quote that brevity is the soul of the wit because uh, one really has to be brave enough to put to, across his. Uh, witty ideas. Wit is not something which is uh, favored by weak. One has to be really smart. One has to be really brave enough so that the ideas which he or she puts across come out as witty or uh, in other words as we say with the term sarcasm. Sarcasm is the soul food of uh, the current times. Whenever we read something on social media, be it something funny, be it something uh, a, a simple quote given by intellectual, we really uh, think highly of uh, that person whosoever puts across uh, that ideas because uh, a simple language in today's times is not uh, taken by in that good spirit as it used to be so uh, there's always something unique which we have to put across the table something really very bold something really very uh, special uh, so that we can touch that nerve of the uh, learners where we really uh, want to. So, yes, brevity is the soul of the wit. And thank you so much. Uh, anyone else for your views? Yep. Yeah, I'm sure. Yes, uh, uh, well, uh, Bhangit, uh, you speak very well and uh, there was a structure to your... Generally, uh, what... I have observed that when, for example, the quote, sir, presented before you on which you had to speak, uh, there was a word brevity. And brevity, I didn't also know the meaning of it. And you attempted it because you, I noticed that you didn't know the meaning of it. But still, you attempted to no. uh, find a meaning. No, no. Brevity, uh, I searched. I, I didn't know the meaning of it. And brevity uh, actually means concise and exact use of words in writing or speech. 
So it means you are comprehensive in explaining your ideas. That's brevity. So never attempt a word or explanation which you don't know a meaning of. You can just, uh, you could have avoided it by just approaching the uh, table topic in a way which does not talk about brevity in, uh, as a meaning. You, could, you should not have explained the meaning of brevity. Instead, you could have approached the soul part that, yeah, uh, soul, what is the core of soul? You could have taken a D root while explaining. So it creates, uh, because by, if you do not know a word and you present your opinion on that particular thing, it creates, it gives you the information that you don't know. You have to hide that you don't know. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Sir Himanshu, for your... No, I'm not, sir. I'm not, sir. I'm just a student. <laughs> I'm a, okay. just a student. There are a lot of, uh, let's say, veteran speakers here. Naveen, sir, Baluman, oh, no. sir. Okay, the point is that I didn't know that I was taking the meaning of brevity is wrong. I really thought that uh, it is being brave, you know, it's another form of that word. So it's not that I wasn't knowing it, it's that that I mistook it. And I think my whole life has been a lie because I always thought that brevity is associated with the, the word brave. Otherwise, happens, happens to the best of us. If the case was that I didn't know if it had been that I didn't know about any such word, I would have rather asked or, you know, uh, I, uh, but thank you for letting me know. Yeah. No, that's all right. Uh, yeah. Let me ask uh, Kanwaljit's uh, opinion. Before that, if there, is a, there is a clue there. The soul of wit. What does the word wit mean? When you say someone says something witty, it's something that is bright, right? Like, for example, uh, Mark Twain always uh, identify one of those, he'll say, you know, against the case of uh, having two wives, it's in the Bible, no man can serve two masters. In the Bible, what it meant was that a person can only be a servant to one person and not two masters. So he connected it with marriage that you, you you can't marry two women because you can't be a, you know, you can't serve two masters. So that is witty, very intelligent way or brilliant way of saying it. So wit is actually playing with words, right? So we get the idea, right? It's playing with words. So brevity is the, is the word that if you don't know, you can end up wrongly. But if you know, then you can say it correctly. So brevity is like you said, uh, Saying the right thing in the simplest, shortest way, or as, as they say, you know, some people, they weigh the words. Every word they say has a meaning and it's chosen beautifully. That's why poets are always valued because their ability to choose the right word for the right moment. And within that that, that form, you know, the, 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 every poem has a certain form, right? A sonnet must be in this way. Uh, a, bo a ballad must be in this way. Ode. So every poem has a certain uh, grammatical rules or for it. Uh, Kanwaljit, can you say something also? Some comments? Um, supposedly, if the same thing comes that uh, you don't know the meaning of the word brevity, then uh, you could have talked about wit only like that. Uh, we can compare actually uh, the great orators who are there, who use wit when they speak, who use wit when they attack people or when they want to say something in disguise. <clears throat> you can actually compare wit uh, uh, as salt that is added in the food. You cannot add it more. You have to add it in a balanced way when you want to convey your message to someone. So if you know the meaning of brevity, it is more of um, uh, having depth in what you are saying. Then a good example could be given of anyone who is elder in your family. If you see your grandmother, grandfather, you will actually realize that these people, they don't speak much, but what they speak, they, this is so balanced. And you can actually add this example. So it's like similes could be used while speaking, uh, giving example of salt as wit. And if you know the meaning of brevity, then your family members could be good examples or else great orators could be taken as good examples. And even writers and uh, those who write um, especially dramas, if you are somebody who read dramas a lot. So I believe this could be taken if 
uh, if we need to give structure to this speech, similes and then good examples. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, how are you, Toastmaster Jati? I'm yeah. good, sir. Yeah. Okay. Who would like to go next? Uh, who was next? I forgot. Uh, was it uh, Toastmaster Indajit? Uh, would you like to uh, I think uh, he wants you and Jay yeah. came at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Toastmaster Himanshu, can I give you a topic? Definitely. I'm ready. Okay. I may be I may be a little bit out of practice. But no, no, that is all right. Okay. Okay, Himanshu, tell me one thing. If we learn from our mistakes, why are we so afraid to make a mistake? If we learn from our mistakes. Why are we so afraid to make a mistake? Fear is a natural emotion. It's a protective way of our system to preserve its integrity. Whenever we are in distress, the, free, the reflex of fear is that which protects us from any emotional harm or physical. So the answer to your question is, why do we fear? We fear because we want to preserve our body, our brain, optimum condition, our emotional state. Hence, this is a natural impulse of our body. Now coming to the point that what is the effect of fear? Fear just simply stops us from being active and pursuing things which actually matters just because it will cost our comfort for a short duration of time. Hence, it is said that be brave in your approach, be bold in your approach, try new and different things because you never know what you can do and what's your potential until you do it. Hence, it is said that fear is the devil which comes for you and holds you in the hell of your own brain. So never let that devil, never let that demon control you because it is trying to make you stagnant in your life. It's hindering your progress. Please, my friend, I suggest each and everyone present here, don't be fearful. Try new things. And you will know that what your body and your mind can achieve, what glories awaits you. So my friend, be fearless. That's all, my friends. I'll rest my voice. Over to you, Table Topic Master. Yeah. Okay. Okay, your topic was more on, on you spoke more on fear. Whereas I mean, this topic was, was on mistakes. That 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 is, that is I mean, like why we are fearful for making mistakes. That is uh, that, that is I mean, let's say that, that if we, when we learn from it. So 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 I mean, uh, even if we do make a mistake, why do we really get, get so scared about making mistakes? Yeah, I I went on the philosophical aspect of why <laughs> we fear making mistake itself. Okay, uh, I should not get carried away with my emotions. Yeah. So, 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 so basically, I mean, the, like, 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 there could be different, a lot of different approaches for this topic. It depends on, on, on really, on how you want to really understand it and how you really want to give examples. But, but this, this is an interesting topic uh, yeah. to attempt. To, to add on, uh, one way you can approach topics like this is think of this concept known as eyes of expert. Eyes of experts basically means looking at things from a different perspective. So if I was to talk about this topic, I'll say, imagine you are a child. What happens when you make a mistake? While drinking milk, you spill it. You get scolding. While working in class, you start scribbling on the table. What do you get? Scolding. So in, we are from the age, we are young, inculcated not to make mistakes. We are encouraged not to make mistakes and therefore we get a fear of making mistakes. So you can say from a child's point of view, right? Then you can talk in uh, of other things, other things where you know, when you're old and all that. 
Whereas, for me, I could say from a Singapore experience that in the army, we were told to make mistakes. When you're writing papers, they say, just do it. Doesn't matter. Keep on doing it until you get it correct. So you end up doing it again and again and again and you are encouraged to do mistakes. So in a, in, a, in a culture where it is encouraged, you will not be afraid to make mistakes. But in a culture where they want things faster, better and quicker, then they will tell you not to do it. And it is not it is not afraid of doing mistakes. It's the embarrassment that comes of being given a lecture in front of everybody in publicly. That's what is making us afraid to attempt to do something. So that's how you put the context, you see. Uh, any other comments from others? Yeah, I think it uh, let, let it covers it. One actually good example you can even give of Toastmasters. That, 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 is, that is when we when we learn by giving speeches that, or different types of speeches. Why are we always af afraid to give speeches despite that? <laughs> that, that? That's one way also you could relate it. Yeah, just my thought. All right. So so next uh, Toastmaster Jethi. Are you ready? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, your topic is it takes two to make a quarrel and one to end it. It takes two to make a quarrel and one to end it. I remember this time when I was fighting with my sister. I wanted her pencil box. It was so attractive. I wanted it so badly. And my father was telling me, Rudul, you got this pencil box a few weeks earlier. I bought you a new one plus a geometry box. Why are you just troubling your sister like that? Just because she's got one today, right now, right new. I got it for her because next week it's going to be her birthday. And this week, when I went to the shop, the shopkeeper told me that, sir, please take it today. Next week, it will not be there. That's why I bought it for her. And why are you troubling her like this? My father came in between both of us. It takes two to start a quarrel. But there's this one person who comes in between and sorts of sort of mediates. And this time it was my father. But my friends, it was not always like this, huh? It was never always like this. In school, I went the next week and I reprimanded her. I told her, Mishti, you have done something totally wrong. I am your elder sister. You're supposed to give it to me. How can you take it? Then there is nobody to mediate, you know, so I took the upper hand. But it was again one of my friends who came in between and told me, Jay, don't trouble her and don't be a bully. She's your younger sister. So just relax, just chill, okay? Just don't do it. So my friends, this is what I'm trying to tell you. It takes two to pick up, get a big quarrel around. And it takes one person to just pour water over it, mediate it. It is so necessary in life for someone to come in between and solve all your troubles so that you maintain your friendship. That is all from my side. Over to you, Topics Master. Well, wonderful toast, Master Jeff. <laughs> Your voice is very expressive, like, like the, the, the way you express and, and narrate. You, you're a natural storyteller. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Very well. And the, and, yeah, and the uh, example you picked from your own childhood, it created an impact and we got a glimpse of the kind of childhood you had, the interaction you had with your sister. And it was actually, I was laughing, I was just smiling throughout the speech itself so it, it actually made me remember some of my old days with my brother 
it's true you know what i just said it's true <laughs> <laughs> and your voice is yeah the truth are most impactful in a speech that's that's what i have observed thank you so much and your voice is very similar to that of shushmita sen i don't know if oh. you, someone has said you wow <laughs> i'm I, flying yes i think a lot many others must have felt this don't didn't they i would like to know because yes you do sound like shushmita sen exactly the same voice i don't care if i lose i have this compliment <laughs> thank you thank you really you. do thank you one i want to say that those must have jayati is that she has a lot of personal stories that she knows how to bring into <laughs> the topic and she knows so how to make use of her voice how to manipulate it to differentiate the different character so throughout the speech we are engaged we are listening for more and more we think for it not to stop <laughs> <laughs> actually i must tell you this to this to master brahma kumar is the one who just pushes me to do videos <laughs> i am the one who is this okay i'll do it later i'll do it that time this uh, this to me to master brahma kumar he is always jayati are you prepared with this i last time he told me give a speech on women's day i was so busy i just couldn't do it so i am so sorry i just couldn't do it but he is the one who pushes me you know and he says do this do that you can this is the, this is how you improve and this is where your strength lies so you do that please So it's a, yeah i've learned a lot from him and from navin sir also <laughs> all right so uh, let's begin uh, well I, i really don't have any recommendation for you because because according to me it, it was perfect <laughs> oh thank you I, 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 I <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah. all right uh, so, can we call a uh, course master inderjit she as a contest i think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. course master uh, inderjit uh, so one minute is my camera much? angle okay I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Is my camera no, no, angle no, no, okay? You, it, it, no, no, no. Slightly it, low. It's, it's slow. You got low. to bring it up. Yeah. It is you got to stack. You got okay. to stack up. You got to stack okay. some books and make it to your eye level. That means okay. you should be looking at a, the the pin hole. Your eye should be directly at it. Then it's okay. Otherwise, it's like you are looking from heaven and talking to us. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'll just set it right, sir. All right. Uh, Toast master Indrajit. Yes, everyone. Yes, I'm there. Good evening, everyone. Pretty long time we are gathering. All right, toast. Okay, the Indrajit. The topic for you is which battles are there to fight, and which battles are there to leave. Which battles are there to fight, and which battles are there to leave. Recording in progress. Life. is full of challenge there are many different kind of fights that we come across now this is not related human fight with each other when i talk about fights and battles it's the challenges that we face there are two type of challenges one is internal that you are fighting the second one is when people challenge you to fight that's there when in my office there was a candidate who was not performing well and everyone said me in the ma'am being a senior you don't know that your team mate she's not performing i don't think so she's able to do it but internally i had a small confidence all i need to give us a push i did not reply to the people i just went to her and i asked are you okay she said yes ma'am the team has challenged me to prove that you're a better candidate for the organization what do you think she said ma'am i can do it but i don't want to listen to the people this is my biggest fight i want to do it on my own pace because i want to bring the best out of me and that's where i knew internally she's very strong she doesn't need me and i left her alone that's one thing i learned in my life the challenge that people give you to improve somebody let the life and the pace go on normally do not stress on the challenge that people give you let the battle go on on its own pace the second 
uh, what I learned on this aspect was you need to be internally strong when people around you are trying to force you to do something which you don't want to do. So ladies and gentlemen, standing here, I would say you only one thing. The challenges or the battles, whatever you come across, be internally strong. Second, skip whatever people say. Over to you, Gondes, Table Topic Master. I don't know after a long time we have done it. So I just tried. Hmm. Okay. Any feedback, first of all? In the heat. Uh, she gave a good example, personal example, to explain the topic. And she had two lessons that she learned from it. It's quite good. Shows that she understand and we can agree with the, her argument and accept it. But there's something missing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's something missing. Okay, how we can ask is that, can someone else try this topic? There's another viewpoint to this. Anyone else want to try this topic? So the I feel the content was good, but you know there are certain phrases and certain words where you can just put in your vocal variety. You know, just bam, hit it. That was a little missing. The energy was a little low. If you could, you know, uh, like, I, I don't know how to put it. If you could just, particular words which you are emphasizing, if you could just, yes, like that. You know, you, you could do that. Probably this particular, your content was really nice. It would have been just, Super. I, I, I felt that. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, as you, as Brahma sir said that there is another perspective. So I want to uh, explain or elaborate on that. Uh, so according to me, this topic can also be interpreted in the sense that there are certain battles which you should not fight. For example, you cannot fight. You cannot fight with your family because there is no winning or losing. You should not fight with your family. Yeah, there might be some conflicts. You can find some solution for it, but there you should not battle it out. It's not a win or lose game. It's about maintaining peace of family. Hence, you can debate about it. You can talk about it. You can have an argument over it, but it's not a matter of win or lose. Because if anyone leaves or anyone gets hurt emotionally, then it's a loss of family only. Because that person will keep a grudge in, inside his heart that, yeah, this person has hurt me in a certain way. So there are few battles which should not be fight at all and be left alone. That's my yep. interpretation. Yep. Like, actually, I, I had a very similar thought for this topic. That is, I mean, like, I don't know if you, if you might have heard of that thought, that although it's a bit abstract thought, that is, never argue with a pig because he, he will pull you in the mud, make you dirty, and then he will win, win you over with his experience. All right. So, 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 so basically, I, like, like, like I, I would take this particular topic in the similar manner that, that is, who are the people whom you should really argue with? The, and, and I mean, does it really make sense to argue or fight with with those people? So that that's one way how I would interpret it. Uh, I also have a take on this. Yeah. Like every morning when we get up, we have two things. We have two C's. One is choice and other is chance. So we have got these choices in life which we need to pick up and we have to take a chance on that. And then we know what to do with these chances. We put all our energies into it and get these, uh, take these challenges and work on them. Now, it, uh, it depends on us, which are the chances we should take, because it is said that you cannot play a game without throwing the dice. So I still remember one of your speeches, Naveen sir, where you talked about one of your friends climbing Mount Everest. And uh, he took this chance and uh, he left his work, job, and then 
he started climbing the mount everest and later he came back again because he couldn't and he took this challenge he should have actually uh, judiciously taken chances in life so there are fights that we can fight and there are but uh, however like there are places where we need to really think about before taking up challenges so there are two balance things in this choices and then chances chances that we take we need to analyze think understand and do things as per our capacities as per our uh, the resources that are available i believe this way it could be balanced yep yep good to good very Sorry. So, so I remember your your speech that when you talked about one of your friends. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> All right. Okay. Next, uh, I think it's Meghna. Are you there, Meghna? Hello, yeah, Meghna. Yeah, she's, she's still there. She's still there. Yeah. I think she. I think she must be away for some time. Oh, what, Bavli? Oh. Yes, okay. sir. Okay, uh, may I give you a topic? Oh, yes, I'm there. I'm sorry. Hey, uh, okay, yeah. okay, you're there, Megan. Yeah, All can right. you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, yes. I, we can hear you. All right, your topic. Yes, sir. Megan is a person starts to live when he can live outside himself. A person starts to live when he can live outside himself. What is the true meaning to one's life? That is to help others, to motivate others, to encourage others, and in that process grow. What I actually uh, perceive from this topic is one person should always dwell to strive to be better version of himself. The very motto of each individual existing on this earth is valid, or is strongly. or will be strongly contemplated when he actually takes the feedbacks received by people who criticize them who motivates them or in other terms teach them a lesson also be it in any of the context each of the lesson should be taken in anticipation that you will grow when you're truly ready to live outside yourself means that you're letting go of your ego you're being an empty cup there's one beautiful story of a master and a servant the particular master trains all of his students except one particular uh, student of his and the student always is in eager to serve his master and to ensure that he makes his master happy every day he tries harder and harder and harder and even after a year master doesn't teach him what he actually wants to learn he says master what is lacking in me that you are not giving me the knowledge you are giving or imparting to other students the master says are you an empty cup he questions him then he says master i'm doing everything to serve you why do you say i'm not an empty cup first empty your knowledge that you already own you think you know everything and better things than other people currently who are training under with me right this particular ego or an understanding of your own abilities is limiting yourself to learn more once you become an empty cup you will be ready to accept the knowledge given by other people so in order to survive and he became an empty cup and he master happily accepted him and gave the, all the knowledge that he wanted and he realized where he lacked so in the world what we truly believe is we know everything come out of this myth come out of this particular surrounding in uh, uh, and and your egoistic circle that you know everything and better than others especially so once you are out of this particular myth in life you start to live you start to grow so being outside yourself is knowing that you are an empty cup and be ready to learn and take what the world has to offer to you over to you fantastic fantastic i really like the concept of the empty cup that you brought in to explain the topic anyone else any other comments yeah like, like this was a difficult topic actually to attempt <laughs> it, it's it's not an easy topic uh, and, and of course i mean uh, you, you, you had interpreted it, it 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 very well and wonderful example given to substantiate uh, the, this particular topic that is uh, th th that is only once you dwell outside outside of you then only can can you really improvise with within you so so it, i mean it was it was given a, a wonderful example um, 
I really don't have any 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 substantial feedback for this. Yeah, Himanshu. Uh, for example, I noticed a certain thing in the speech that uh, in I have noticed that initial ten to fifteen seconds are the uh, precious moments of a speech. Uh, you can actually grab attention of people in that particular speech. Uh, that particular uh, 10 to 15 seconds. So in earlier 10 to 15, 20 seconds, uh, the essence of the uh, quote was lost. Uh, I, I was not understanding where the speech is going and how she is going to connect dots. And I was uh, jumbling through it. So it was that 15 seconds, which could have been used to actually substantiate the quote itself and then provide with uh, the story you presented would have created a much more impact than it created now. Yeah, yeah, the I'm initial right. 15 moments, I think, are very You're important. Right. And uh, initially, I was lost. Uh, no, that's true. I, I take that totally. I take that totally, yeah. That I understand where I did. Yeah. Naveen, can, uh, Naveen sir can actually <laughs> help you out in that because I have learned it from Naveen sir itself. That this 15 seconds initially are very important. You have to make an impact in that. Yep, I fully agree. But 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 overall, overall, the, the speech was quite impactful overall. And and, and I mean, it's, it's not a very easy easy topic to really attempt on. And and and, and I mean, like even if, if I would have attempted on this, even in in myself, it would have taken me at least 15-20 seconds to even get, gather my thoughts on how to really attempt it. So so I, I mean, like what you said is right, Manchu, But it takes time, like for these type of topics. And difficult topics. Yeah. All right. So, who is who is next? Uh, Toastmaster Jati uh, would you like to go next. Uh, even I don't know who is next. Uh, sir, I'll go yeah. next. If you... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Toastmaster. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes. Sorry about it because I I, I didn't know the order. Uh, well, I'll give you a topic. I'll give you a topic. <laughs> I'll give you a topic. Oh, you want to give? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. You, you may give. Yeah. Uh, are you giving Toastmaster Brahm? Ah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to put in the chat first. This is also from Shakespeare. And if you are wondering, because she's actually an English teacher, so it will give her, <laughs> uh, it will help us. La, in other words. So your topic is actually, some are born great, others achieve greatness. Some are born great, others achieve greatness from William Shakespeare. Over to you. This takes me to the story of one of the most famous cricketers of these days, Praveen Tambe. If you have heard about him, Praveen Tambe was told by people that he is a gully cricketer and would never be able to make great in his career. What he did, he kept fighting. He was always found on the playground and later when he was 41 years old, he got chance in IPL and actually made a great life. So many times, my dear friends, it happens that we find greatness in ourselves. You all need to ask three questions to yourself first. The first question would be, what is your value? Who you are? Second, what is the purpose of your life? Why you are born? And the third would be, what is your future? What your death? destiny would be. If you ask these three questions to yourself and you get the answer, definitely you are going to make, make something great in your life. Now, if we talk about people who are born great, we think that yes, these people who are famous, who are successful, whether he is Elon Musk, whether it is Warren Buffet, they are born great. No, they have done a lot of hard work. They have put in a lot of dedication. They were consistent. So Warren Buffet and Bill Gates were asked one question that what is the recipe of being successful, being great? They both did not discuss with each other and said one thing, it's focus. So when you focus, you actually become great. So I would say there is nobody is born great. You might be born with a silver spoon. You might be born with all the facilities, luxuries that you have, but you have to make a great life by working on yourself, getting up every morning. Nobody is going to push you in this world. You yourself 
is going to push your you, uh, you and you can make a great life just being the person you are have believe in yourself make strategies work on them be consistent in your life and you can definitely make it over to you table topic master that's brilliant i like the point when you ask those three questions that you have to ask that nails it everybody will be on your side <laughs> however i feel you should still take the key words when you are ending the topic like whether we are born great or we achieve great those two things those two words must come in at the end to drive home your point make it even more impactful so i strongly believe that a person is not born great they achieve greatness what do you all think or don't you agree and uh, then it's really the winner and uh, like, like if you like, like just out of curiosity like have you heard this quote before it was master kavaj yeah it's it's shakespearean quote Yeah. yeah like if it, yeah no i mean the, the reason i'm asking is because if you know the full quote it, it becomes much more easier to substantiate on this the full quote is some are born great others achieve greatness and some have have greatness thrust upon them so 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 the thing is uh, like, like i mean the, the, these are the, these are the three three whatever you call sentences in in this particular quote uh, the, then one one way to attempt it there are different ways to attempt it i mean one way Like like what came in my mind? Uh, like like once I got if I if I get this topic is that you know give an example without taking names and which the audience understands. That is uh, like like you know I mean an example. Achieve the level which is required in their profession. and unfortunately they get called by different name such as papu now let me tell you an example of some people who who were born very modestly they were they were tea sellers and 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 see they 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 had organizations they had nations they had they, they had diff- different associations so friends uh, and there are some people who just have greatness thrust upon them despite not having any quality only because of because of uh, people uh, people feel that they have some value upon them so which particular category do you really want to uh, want to be in so 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 you know like, like these type of examples without taking names uh, which people can understand and something which is related to to some current scenario that really enlivens the audience right so so so, so that's just one way <laughs> so i just have a question because i did not uh, use a personal story and also i started with an example so will it call, will it be called a, bet, a good structure so because i directly started with an example no uh, uh, no that's all right i mean it, it, it's perfectly all right to, to 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 even begin with an example and then and then substantiate on on how your example is, is relevant for this particular topic that, that, that's perfectly all right oh, thank you sir all right i think next is toast master jati yeah Okay, uh, Toastmaster Jati, your your topic is the robbed that smiles steals something from the thief. The robbed that smiles steals something from the thief. The robbed that smiles steals something. Thief. it's very difficult for me so i don't think i'll be able to attempt this uh, it's, it's it's very yeah. no, no no that's all chumbling right. okay tosma say mashu would you like to attempt yes sir uh, as the quote suggests that the person who gets robbed and smiles steals something from the thief it means that the person who has control over their own emotion and does not let others control it on situational basis and what they do he is the person 
who is beyond the control of people surrounding him. Hence, he has taken the power from the people around him to control his own happiness and his control his own emotions. So the person who gets robbed, who gets trashed, who gets oppressed and still smiles, does not give the other person power to influence him. Hence, he is a more stronger and more uh, enlightened person because you cannot control others' actions. What you can control is your own actions and your own emotions. That's all from my side, Table Talk Master. Over to you. Yep. Good, good. Was, was, was I making sense? Or uh, was I just blabbing? No, 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 partly, partly, like, like, like you did make sense because I mean, again, again, this is a bit tricky, tricky topic to to to, to really understand and, and speak on at, at the same time. Uh, so, so, uh, like, like, in fact, in fact, I, I was asked this topic, like, I think about about eight or nine years ago, like, when I was part of District Eighty. I think it it was in in one of the area contests, if I if I can even correctly recall. So, so I mean, like, like the example which, which I had given was that was by storytelling. That is, I give an example. That is, uh, that, that, that is one day. Well, I was just, I was just uh, left my house, and I noticed that, that my wallet is empty. So, 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 I, and I opened it, and and I, and I noticed it was, it was totally empty. That there was nothing in it. Uh, so, so I mean, I inquired about it. Who, who, who it could be? Well, but, but I mean, at, at, at that moment, I really didn't, I didn't uh, bother so much. But then, when I came back home uh, during the evening time, at that time. I said, "Wow, do you know what? I I I just I just made up a story and and, and I said today I found an empty wallet. Uh, uh, sorry, a wallet f filled up of money while I was going to the office, and 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 for a for a moment, I did I didn't know who 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 it was. But but then there was a message written on it that is, if you lose something, you also gain something. And wow." Uh, was I, was I glad that, that today today was a special day for me because in in one of my wallet I noticed there was nothing over there and in my other in the other wallet which I found it was filled up of, of money so so the thing is I I asked everyone what should I do with it but then I noticed that my son he had his, he had his head head down in shame and then he himself confessed after after a few days that that he that that he he had flipped money from my wallet. When, like, like while I was sleeping. So friends, the thing is, if you, if you are able to smile, even when you're distressed, so believe it or not, you will steal something from the person who has caused you all the agonies in the life. So, so. Yeah, uh, I, I could have substantiated my argument with uh, the story of Ashok and Kalinga. Mm -hmm. uh, the Buddhist of Kalinga actually changed Ashok, mm -hmm. even though uh, they could not win the war, they mm -hmm. lost, there was a genocide in killing, but uh, their rigidity, their control of their own emotions, their spirituality changed the oppressor, mm -hmm. the Ashoka itself. So I, uh, it came to my, uh, it, it came to me a few seconds ago. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so the, the, the different way with, with how you how you can approach it, but yeah, yeah. Those must make them. Yeah. So I thought we could give an example of India, sir. India, a lot of people invaded India and brought, uh, you know, robbed the wealth of India. But India doesn't uh, still welcomes everyone and that's what. India is a country that spreads happiness, smiles, even after being uh, robbed by so many people because we are wealthy. We are not wealthy because of the riches and the money we have, but because of the emotions, culture and this heritage culture is in our blood. And this cannot be stolen. And the thieves do realize that they have stolen everything, but there's a lot left in India, which they can never steal. Something like this. So that, I, I don't know if it makes sense, but I thought it would. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's true. But, 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 but you, you will notice, uh, like, like actually in this, there, there are two parts. The rob that smiles. That is, I mean, if you're able to smile after after be, be, being robbed or, or, or anything bad has happened to you, and then you must be able to steal something from the thief as well. That, 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 that is what have you stolen from that particular thief. So, 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 so both, both the points have, have to be addressed, especially when, when, they, when there are any topics with two sentences, you, you have to just uh, see those things that 
both the parts get balanced together yeah that's just that is also there learning. the second half of the topic should be covered okay yeah, yeah. okay sir yeah kaval ji so yeah so my take would be that uh, no one has the power to break you unless you let them do that so this could also be another take and the story that uh, and, and the personal incident that uh, navin sir shared it was more of like sometimes we can also add a blessing in disguise maybe sometimes mm-hmm. that we we do not let people control our emotions they keep moving and uh, we keep doing our work and later because we, because as a, one topic that we did karma is a boomerang so i i could actually connect these three four dots and uh, make a speech on that maybe yep. so uh, it's if we don't react to the situation and we keep moving on and don't let anyone suppress us maybe later and we don't look back and don't regret maybe the person who has robbed us from our happiness because people feel happy when they do something bad to us and we keep smiling and move on maybe we are stealing that happiness from this from person who is uh, who is trying to rob us and sometimes such things when they happen it's like a blessing in disguise and we all actually come back with a lot of energy sure. later yeah yeah the, uh, i and i want to just say a few lines that uh, the person who robs from a place loses his sleep because he is always afraid of getting caught so oh, yeah So yeah yeah has to from the other has lost money but uh, he has actually taken his sleep yep. so yeah in fact uh, in fact there, there, there was one topic also which was asked in district 80 final uh, i think about i don't know how many years ago that is a pile of cash on the road would you take it or leave it it it, it was asked uh, <laughs> <I'll take> it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, it was a very interesting topic and it was asked in the final of district 80 I think some, somewhere about eight, eight, even eight years ago, maybe nine years ago, he must be remembering to ask Master Brahm. <laughs> just talk. What was the topic exactly? Huh? Sir? Sorry. Just, just, just that a pile of cash is laying on um, the road, and will you take it or leave it? Yeah, yeah, a pile of a pile of cash on the road. Ta- will you take it or leave it? That, that was the topic. Sir, according to me, a person who leaves, uh, if he gets a bowl of butter and still leaves it. uh then i think he is a fool <laughs> yeah maybe it would be like an opportunity that you bought i would say that yeah. i will take it and i will spend it wherever i want <laughs> yeah. So, yeah so the, like in fact this particular topic also the, the rob that smiles steals something from the thief this is also from shakespeare <laughs> yep yeah to smile bhavneet yes uh, my say would be that uh, initially i would be a- was tempted to uh, take all that uh, pile of cash because who doesn't want to let's be honest if there's so much money lying over there who won't want to take away all of that but at the same time i would also be afraid of all the law and enforcement and agencies and due to that i'm also going to lose all my sleep all my uh, peace of mind because i would would know that some, it that money belongs to someone else and not mine and he or she must be finding that in they may be approaching police and everything beyond so what i would do is first uh, the first uh, thing which will come in my mind is uh, let me uh, take this money to a nearby police station and deposit it to them but since i know how much honesty the policeman also shows they will themselves take away all the money <laughs> and especially in india the police is like this we all know so i would not really go, go to a nearby police station so what else i would do i would maybe look upon what uh, which charity or which ngo is working at their level best who the persons who are do, uh, doing a quality work so i would rather think of depositing all of that cash to a to a worthy ngo who is really doing uh, a work of great value so um, uh, and most suitably to an orphanage or an old age home right. that's yeah. my take yeah that's quite noble okay so the bound bounding it's short term on right. your topic to begin yep. begin yes sir begin begin that's the topic see the chat okay to begin begin let me tell you all my dear friends taking the first step is the most 
difficult task we encounter in almost every phase of life be it when we were as kids we always were very afraid of going to the school we were clinging on to our mothers no mom i really don't want to go to the school please don't send me let me play at my own home only the students other students will bully me teachers will beat me up i will cry i used to be a very afraid shy child but as i went to the school first day i faced difficulty second day a little less of difficulty and gradually as the days passed i overcame all the hurdles even a small young mind had during that period of time and i was actually really happy attending the schools and similarly it's not it's not a very different case even now when i am a gr- totally grown up i do feel shy as exactly today i was shy of attending the stores masters meetings oh meeting oh my god there would be a lot many experienced people over there they are doing their best they would be speaking like the uh, learned people more the kind of people we uh, listen to on youtube and i am just very new to this organization the toast masters but since i enjoy every weekend meeting uh, in in my city toast masters club so let me just make a further step and join the meeting let's see maybe i will make a mistake maybe i will do a little better but that's all the toast masters is about where you are allowed to make a mistake so i began and i joined this meeting and i am really very i am really ha- having a great time listening to all the learned speakers so thank you so much over to you table topic master yep yep it's a wonderful example and we could all connect to it wonderful toast master bhavi okay any feedback thank you sir toast master jayanti you want to give feedback is quite good at giving feedback also yes sir yes sir i I'm sorry i was on the other side yeah. yes sir yeah uh, were you listening to her speech bounty speech no i didn't quite oh it's okay concentrate um, they were calling me about something and i didn't oh it is all right uh how yeah. about kadwal ji got any comments Uh, it was a wonderful start she started uh, with some very relatable example that uh, uh, we when we were uh, kids we used to cling to our mothers and then never wanted to start something and then in the middle a very good example of toastmasters that we need to she started her toastmasters journey and that was also relatable the only thing that i felt was that uh, the ending was a bit abrupt which could be worked upon otherwise a wonderful take on the topic from the beginning to end so when we go to the end if we have uh, this is what I, with this mistake uh, this is the mistake that i generally make i take a lot of time giving examples and take very less time giving a moral or giving kind of a, a winding up my speech because the last few lines give a lot of impact on the audience so that is i believe only the last part was there where which could be actually extended a bit Uh, like uh, with add like adding a quote or something like that on starting a journey good right wonderful uh, yeah to swasta okay. jayati can we call you yeah to yeah. swasta jayati your topic is the child is the father of man by william wordsworth the child is the father of man I remember when I lost my husband. My son was in the twelfth standard. For the first three months, I was totally lost. I couldn't think. I couldn't do anything logically. It was my son who came to my rescue. He made me understand, Ma. life has to go on 
you are here i am here we have to support each other we are there for each other my child became my parent that was the time when we started building a very close relationship that was the time we started building on how we should chalk out a plan in our lives that is the time we started to think how to begin where to begin what to do and every step of the way my son was with me supporting me he had my back and he was guiding me because he's the next generation and these are they as millennials are much ahead of us so i took his advice at every step and at every step he proved his worth thank god for him and thank god for all the advice he gave to me he was just like a parent to me it was as if the child had become the parent i am going to be eternally thankful to him and always always grateful that he was there by my side supporting me in times in life in our families we have each other's backs and that is where the true colors the true intelligence the true characters of people come across and that is where at times of severe calamity the child becomes the father of man over to you topics master Well, very well expressed, Toastmaster Jati. Any feed, any feedback from 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 anyone before I give a feedback? Okay. As usual, uh, very okay. good okay. usage okay. of a uh, very good usage yeah. of a uh, story to link with the topic, and it's very convincing. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. wonderful toast master jati yeah yeah you you really nailed nailed the topic and you expressed it it, it very well uh, but, but, but just like like one important thing which I, which I, which i would like i'd like to tell not only you to tell you and everyone that that is you know in in any speech whether it can be table topic isc or, or any topic whenever you, uh, you 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 talk about losing anyone just remember the, the uh, that is by default uh, the the energy of the audience always goes down so 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 it becomes it always becomes uh, i i'm not saying a responsibility but always try to 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 also lift up the energy of the audience whenever you you you're expressing any loss in 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 any in any topics so so i mean there are different ways to do it i mean you like like i like just mention any humorous incident that 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 is in in which you felt that that, that is your son has really become a man and he has overtaken So, like, like everyone else and you, you really felt proud on that particular day so lift up the spirit there the are different ways of doing it it could be anything humorous it could be anything achievement or anything but 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 do ensure that the the, the energy once it has gone down it rises up back up back, back up again in fact i also learned this very late uh, like, uh, maybe just a couple of years ago but but, but a wise man really told me about it i like, like in fact i i can also give his name like, like actually it, it was our district 80 um uh, uh, that is uh, past district governor uh, uh, what's what's his name uh, pradeep uh, uh, dtm pradeep you must be knowing it was must be here pradeep like he told me about it because i i also used to make a lot of these these mistakes the silly mistakes <laughs> over a bit all right okay uh okay toast master megna who very like yes, to go sir, next yes i'm ready yeah Okay. Uh, would you like to give a topic, uh, Brahma, or anyone? Uh, yeah, anyone else? Uh, anyone else has a topic for her? Because she's going for contest. It's the tougher, the better. Hmm. Let's see. So I have a topic. May I? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah, definitely. 
this is a beautiful day. I have never seen this day before. This is a beautiful day. I have never seen this day before. Wow, what a beautiful day. I just cannot imagine a day more beautiful than this. Let me tell you why I truly feel this. Because the beauty is an eye of the beholder. And what I'm seeing today, I would like to show you all through this journey of my speech. This day was a day where there was annual gathering of specially able children. I happened to witness that particular moment where they went out to do something very impossible that I couldn't imagine as a person and as an individual would have. That is the will, the gut, the faith, the determination and the belief in oneself. I saw these kids smiling out loud, living their life to the fullest possible extent. This is the beauty I had never seen before. The courage that these kids get onto stage, performing the task and the acts that they did without having a leg, without having a hand. Some people, even without having eyes, could play beautifully the instruments. This day has embarked a new journey onto my life that impossible is nothing. The word, very word impossible is itself stands for I am possible. And these people, these kids have proved out loud that they are the true definition of what one individual should be. In life, irrespective of what you have or don't have, what you really need to have is the will and a determination that you will succeed come what may. And this is the day, my friends, that changed my life forever. And I truly believe I am a person who's not realized all of my potential. Do you guys sitting in the audience feel that you have realized your potential? Then just for once, imagine those people who are not having two eyes, a tongue to speak, they're dumb. Someone who doesn't have a leg to walk, but still, winning Olympics gold medals for India, someone who's made India proud by doing the impossible, by not having what we as normal human beings have. I call them, they're special because they have made themselves special. They were not born special. They have proved out to be special because they have worked on their abilities and become stronger than all of us sitting here today. And that's the day that truly lives a strong memory in my mind that I cannot forget. A beauty to cherish and live forever. Over to you. Okay. Any feedback? Absolutely wonderful. Right. Yeah. Uh, anyone? Any feedback for, for Toastmaster Meghna? I like the way she started with the words beauty, beautiful, and uh, corrected to people who are blind. That's even more beautiful because it, it, it makes the, the topic more powerful, the, the speech more powerful. Uh, I only have one one question. I, I, I This is my personal feeling. You may not agree. I think you should not use the beauty yeah. in the eye of the beholder. You, you should not use it here. What you should say is that beauty can be seen by all of us if we wear a different lens and that lens is the lens of whatever you want to call it. Because when you say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, that means like what I see is beautiful may not be beautiful to Jayati. What Jayati sees is beautiful may not be beautiful for Naveen. So in a way you are, in the info world, they call it, you, know, you are scoring your own goal. You are going against your own point. So that line shouldn't be there. Something else saying that there's beauty there, but we are not seeing it. But if we see it from a different angle, you can always find beauty there. That would be much more impactful. Okay, sir. Yep. Yeah. 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 Like, 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 I mean, um, I felt that, that, that your, your, speech, your, your, uh, your speech was right on the topic and it addressed it. Uh, I mean, the, the only small thing i mean it's not a major thing a small thing which i really found missing was a wow factor that's that that, that is not in a table topic you have to be different as compared to others because when you know that everyone is going to get the same topic how can you really be be somewhat different as compared to others it may be in any manner i might not, not, not i might not be i might not be able to express it correctly 
but right now but uh, in, any, in, a, in any topic just try to see what is what is something which you which you feel you can add more which others would not have, have, have thought about or most likely would not have come, come across that so that's just one thing sure, sir. i mean that part i'm going to drop yeah 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 okay no no no, no i've got one request at toastmaster jethi will, will be attempting her her isc speech for area level day after tomorrow on sunday so she so she would like to to take feedback from all of us she'll be delivering her speech right now and everybody everyone has to give at least one feedback to her minimum uh, so, are you so, timing her so, are you timing uh, her so, uh, navin are you timing yeah, yeah, her yeah sure yeah 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 sure oh if you want i, I can uh, do it uh, yeah no no that's all uh, uh, like, like, like i'll time it's five to seven minutes speech and everyone has to give one feedback minimum all right so, so, so I is my camera okay it has to it's be higher better yeah yeah a little bit more yeah because right now it, it is on your chest i believe the the this the, the camera level. must be on your chest level right now yeah so if, okay. if you can just make it if you can just put one one or two books just, one book yes yeah, sir yeah. once yeah once. sure that's all Uh, Toastmaster Indrajit also has a speech. I thought she will deliver it. <laughs> Maybe she couldn't. Okay. No, 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 no. In fact, she could have. I mean, we we could have given a feedback. It's it's all right. Yeah. If it was. And in the interim, till Toastmaster Jayati uh, corrects her camera, so I had one thing to share. So yep. Uh, yep. we have district semis of evaluation contest on seventeenth, sir. So any inputs as to where can I go and evaluate and increase my skills at on evaluation. On on evaluation, um, let me do one thing. I just uh, like can you just have a WhatsApp to me? I'll uh, I'll send you one uh, like like the one slide slide deck which, which I always use for for my evaluation workshop. So okay. so, uh, so, uh, so just go through it. I mean, uh, it, uh, it could it, it, it's it's quite extensive. So so just go through it. If, if you're not able to understand any slide or, or any point, feel free to contact sure. contact me anytime. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, Jethi is back. Yep. Yeah. Is it okay now? Is it okay? It's better. Yeah, much much better. Okay. Uh, so are you yeah, timing yeah. me? I just did. Okay. My speech title is "Identity of a Woman." All right. Okay. So now I would like to uh, call on the next contestant, Toastmaster Jethi Datta. Identity of a woman. Identity of a woman. Toastmaster Jethi Datta. There's a saying regarding the amount of sindoor or vervelin which falls on the bride's nose when her groom puts it on her forehead. It determines how much he will love her. But what happens if the sindoor is not there on her forehead anymore? What happens then? Contest chair, fellow toastmasters and respected guests, I'll tell you what happens to her. Overnight, she becomes cursed, unlucky, inauspicious. And that is exactly what happened with me. Friends, I was born in Kolkata and raised in Bangalore. When I was studying in Jyotinivas College, I met my husband, Dr. Satya, who was then interning in one of the medical colleges over there. We met, we fell in love, and after our studies got over, we married. We shifted base to Bakura, where I currently reside. A few years into our marriage, we had our son, Sundaram. My life was set, or so I thought. Then tragedy struck and my life turned completely upside down. The incidents which I'm going to share with you, my friends, have happened, occurred, and I still face them today. Well, not to that extent, but it's there. On the 24th of September 2013, I lost my husband to diabetic nephritis. The aftermath of his death was horrendous and life-changing for me. Three months after his passing were a blur. It still is because I cannot recall the incidents which happened during that period of time. My son tells me so. So there I was, 
just sitting and staring blankly at the walls. When out of the corner of my eye, I noticed my son had an exasperated look on his face. He was searching for his spectacles and he couldn't find them. So I promptly got up from my place, opened a drawer, fished out the spectacles and handed it to him. That was my moment of realization. I realized that I had become the go-to person of the family, the face of the family, and the most important part, the sole earning member of the family. My in-laws were very aged, and my son was then in the 12th standard. So I had to chalk out a plan in my life, and therefore I wanted to visit my nursing home, which was run by my doctor husband. The first day I went to my nursing home, I looked at the building and I was so intimidated by it that I came back home, I didn't have the courage to enter. The second and the third day, the same thing happened. On the fourth day, I told myself, Jayati, you're the one responsible to put food on that table and it is the nursing home which gives us our bread and butter, so you better do something about it. Motivating myself with these thoughts, I set off for the nursing home. My nursing home has seven steps to its entrance. As I approached, I saw around 14 to 15 people standing at the entrance. I thought they were here to welcome me. I alighted from the car, and as I started ascending the steps, I was rudely told to go back because according to them, I was unqualified incapable and cha a widow how can she enter let alone run it something just snapped in me i turned around looked at the speaker in a calm but strong voice i told him i own this place and i am the person who's going to run this place if anybody has a problem with that or refutes that can walk out right now with these words, I marched inside my nursing home. There was another incident which highlighted my plight, and this involved my neighbor's daughter, Nandini. Nandini, my beautiful Nandini, she was my neighbor's daughter, but a constant fixture at my home. She was the daughter I did not give birth to, and I loved her. To her engagement, I was not invited, inauspicious. Nandini got married, settled abroad, years rolled by. One day I get a call from her that she is visiting. I was ecstatic. Immediately I started making plans of how I would welcome her. Nandini came to her mother's place and that very evening her husband Anjan met with a bad accident. He was admitted to my nursing home in a critical condition. Now Anjan had a rare blood type. He was AB positive. I searched everywhere. I just wasn't getting it. I am AB positive too, but I hesitated to give my blood because I didn't know how Nandini's mother would react. But then Nandini pleaded with me. She said, Auntie, won't you help us at this hour of need? You're the only one who can help us. Won't you help your Nandini? I relented. Two bottles of my blood coursed through his veins. Miraculously, he recovered. And all this while, Nandini was clutching onto me. When she saw her mother, she said, Ma, is she auspicious enough for you now? Sometimes I wonder why is it that people don't realize that becoming a widow was not my choice. I didn't have any hand in it. Having said that, today I single-handedly and successfully run my nursing home. According to Mandy Hale, the American author, she says, strong women, they do not play victim. They stand and they deal. And that is exactly what I did. My friends, while it is true that you cannot force someone to respect you, 
but you can absolutely refuse to be disrespected because it's our actions which define our identity and not this spot of sindur or vermilion on our forehead. Thank you, Contest Chair. Excellent. My comment is the, the speech title, you need to change it. You have to give it a different, a more powerful title. No, it shouldn't be identity of a woman. Could be auspicious woman. Something that ties in with the message of your speech. What do you all think? Mm. I've got double thoughts actually regarding the title. It it may blend or it, it even may not blend. Also, it, it it depends on 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 how it gets interpreted. It's 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 got uh, because I mean uh, the the speech does relate to to uh, to to basically an identity of a woman that is a woman may be powerful or or, or is powerful if she if she if she really if she if she can can really control herself or, or and, and and take all the responsibilities which she, she has, uh, Toastmaster Jethi has really explained well and or exhibited well in this particular story. Yeah, yeah Toastmaster Michael. So Toastmaster Jethi, wonderful. I, it was very strong. The story actually is the hero of your speech to be very honest. But uh, what I contemplated from her speech was uh, uh, she was speaking more over identities, basically in Hindu, uh, like in Indians, basically consider the Sindhu and uh, Sindhur Mangal Sutra and all as identity of women only if they are like that. So I think based on that, she's given the title if I'm not wrong. Yeah, right, Jayati? Yeah. So yeah, that that's the thing. And uh, uh, very, very uh, they are very strong positive things. And uh, there are a couple of uh, recommendations also from my end. The strong pointers are uh, the story is really good. Okay, but I think initially you were running, then you paced down, then you became comfortable with the speech. While you happened to tell about your uh, very opening, you said right. The Sindhur is like uh, uh, the one how much she loves the husband. And then I lost my husband. You said, and immediately you went down to happy mode where you said I met uh, Dr. Sund uh, Satyam like you told about your husband right so all of a sudden when you were telling about the demise of your husband and all of a sudden you became happy so there has to be a pause there has to be a pause where audience absorb that uh, you know sad moment and we, we were like all of a sudden how can you go into that big happy mode uh, so if you are going to get into that zone you have to ensure that you pause take give an audience a second to absorb that moment and then let me tell you uh, something like let me take you down the stream uh, memory lane where I have one happened to met my husband something like that so that is very important because that keeps up the transition or else the transition is all that's one place second thing is uh, 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 like uh, you, when you walked into the hospital uh, like barring you said I was in a calm voice but you were so loud and you were so frustrated and agitated in your speech. So if you are calm, you have to get onto the calm mode and then tell, like, this is my hospital. Like, you have to get onto the calm mode. I could see you being loud and, you know, you being having that anguish. So you tell, I was, uh, anger only you tell. Why you want to say calm? If you say calm and you're not calm, then that will not match your speech. So that's another thing. Okay. And uh, while you were talking about some contest that was happening with your son also, give specs or something. There also there was slight hurriedness. So only thing is appropriate pauses, balancing in expressions and matching your, uh, what you speak, you should uh, present on the screen. That's the only thing. If you work on these things, no, nothing like it. Even uh, the ending is good where you say, I stand strong. Women are the one who stand, uh, take it strong and hard and then deal. So all good. Just that, you know, matching the expressions with what you're saying is very important pausing appropriately and take it very strongly in the opening only there is transition fault so that is very important that you get the audience back give a moment for audience to absorb and then tell let me take you down the memory lane where i happen to meet the, my husband then get happy so that would make more sense this is my personal uh, feedback nothing else yep. okay Okay, Toastmaster Jethi, as I mentioned before, you're an excellent storyteller and, uh, and your voice modulation and you're so expressive. 
that is uh, that is basically I, I also got lost in your speech for a, <laughs> like, like for a moment on, on the way you expressed it it just felt as if i'm I, i'm watching a film no so right. she will definitely make it in the area i am very confident but yeah. in case she wants to go higher she has to like get on to expression yeah. things like yeah true true very true no no no, no i just um, i mean i could just catch catch one one minor feedback i no, i'm not sure how much relevant it is uh, like, like like i felt i mean like when you were transitioning from from the part that that, that is you no know, you, you started taking control of your, of your of your nursing home uh, like initially you, you you were resisted you were facing resistance out there and then like actually you and then eventually you told them that that, that you are the owner and, and and you're going to run it so after that like when you moved to the second story of 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 that small kid sorry i forgot her name that 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 yeah. child nandini yeah, yeah so 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 between these two phases there, there was a bit abruptness in the transition because uh, like like uh, i mean me as an audience i wanted to know what happened next after like like after you after you, you, like like if you said that in the nursing home uh, like i mean like what what like probably you, you would explain, explain that even in one sentence and after i took control uh, that, that that is i that is, i set everything in 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 place in the in this nursing home or the nursing home really prospered and uh, and, and also today i mean uh, and, and also today it, it it is being run just as effectively how it was being run by my husband even, even if you could have just expressed it in one sentence we could have, we, we could have got hang of it that is because that story was to, was i felt was a bit incomplete like, like when you left it there but nevertheless i mean let, let me let, let me do take care that that, that that is when there is of course I mean, it's very important to complete a full story so that so that we know what is going on otherwise it becomes abrupt but but also take care of your timing because because i believe it, like the timing was almost i think almost 7 minutes something second i i, I couldn't catch it exactly so so i mean if, if you're adding anything in your speech then it then it should not really go go a bit overboard so take care of, of, of the timing that is very important but nevertheless do take care of the transitions part that that is each and every story which you're expressing has to be complete in nature that, that's the only thing i could catch otherwise i was totally engrossed in in, in your speech thank you yeah, yeah. okay uh, feedback from, from from anyone else brahma i just uh, got one idea on your uh, title uh identity of woman a curse or a boon you can i don't know i just can suggest whether it is a curse or a boon like you took that particular curse and you went out to prove to the world that what you could succeed this identity is given by the world but you went against the norms and proved yourself right so you can give this title just uh, you can i this is just a suggestion i am sorry but yeah i just speak yeah Uh, you can also uh, okay just a suggestion also on the name uh, uh, auspicious me that's all you don't have to uh, say anything just the title is auspicious me uh, i just have a suggestion on this as well it's like uh, an identity of a woman and you gradually unfolded it so the audience is like what is she going to speak so if in the beginning only if you with the title you open up everything maybe they would come to know what i go what are you going to speak next so i'm not sure if i'm right or wrong but i believe that the title that suggests or the title that you have is actually about identity of a woman whether it's it's being uh, somebody who is married this is her identity what his act what is actually her identity so giving anything else adding anything else to the title will actually open up all the suspense so this i was waiting for it what is the identity of a doctor or a married woman so that's why i was listening to you and i was completely captivated and at the end i came to know when you gave this message clearly that you can't force anyone to respect you they uh, you can't force but you but people shouldn't disrespect you so you opened up at the end and that then it could be added at the end like that's the identity of a woman so i really believe that something else could be added but opening up the suspense should be there people should actually be curious what you are going to speak up i i don't know if adding auspicious or unauspicious in the beginning would actually open up the things that what would be next otherwise i believe that a wonderful storyteller you are you kept us captivated throughout and uh, one suggestion about your uh, like recommendation that i could give is if you could use a prop i i believe that the prop was 
yeah you have this bindi okay i couldn't see it maybe it was uh, not clearly visible so maybe the spectacles of your son or something like that and then a lot of pathos was there in your speech it was really touchy and sometimes you brought the smile last but not the least the only one recommendation the dialogues were there but in case you add your son's dialogue or somebody who is stopping you to enter the nursing home and a dialogue from that person could add a bit uh, could add a value to your speech otherwise i believe it was completely engrossing and you are a wonderful storyteller it it was uh, it, it was so wonderful to and thank you navin sir and ramu kumar sir to bring her here and let her let us <laughs> it was a beautiful speech thank you thank you so much I'll, I don't know. I don't know. I'll... I will. I am going to. You know. I have made mental notes about all whatever all of you said. I am going to try and incorporate. Yeah. Like, like, like one more suggestion. I am mean, not saying it's not a suggestion or whatever, but like one more thing. I mean, which I generally suggest to to any to anyone who is especially appearing for ISC contest after they practice their speech in any club or anywhere. just ask uh, people that is what is the take away message you got from my speech ask everyone about it that, that, that is according to you what is it and especially the ladies i mean like don't miss the ladies like especially the ladies that, that's a, that is what is the take away message you got from my speech after hearing my speech and just take the feedback if it, it, i'm not saying everything everyone will say right it, it may be right it may be wrong but but, but i mean you you will get a general idea of how people perceive your speech or or i mean or the takeaway message which they are getting is it in sync with what you feel okay yes sir yes yeah. like, like, like also like after the contest like like irrespective of the result uh, like mm-hmm. whoever whoever has attended the contest just just ask them this question <laughs> okay yeah yeah thank you so much for giving me this opportunity yeah, thank yeah, you yeah himanshu would you like to add anything yeah yeah uh i noticed three things which were breathtaking uh in your speech the first was the voice modulation it was on point and it was very effective it was very smooth second i noticed that your hand gestures were actually very sync with your uh, emotions and what you were trying to convey there was a bit of facial expressions involved with that too and third thing i noticed that uh it is a um, what say com- uh, recommendation that uh, while you were changing switching emotions it was more of a drama and play kind of a thing for example a sex, uh, uh, shakespearean play for example uh, there is a con- it, it was like an opera you get me it wasn't much of a speech your switching of emotion was more appropriate for opera style speaking so uh, there was sudden switches in motions so i felt that uh, you can actually tone down the kind of expression you present it's a well renowned it's very impactful but it should not uh, in speech i think it should be a bit mild milder in sense because it was overpowering uh emotions and some of uh, it comes from the fact that it actually uh, it's uh, you were explaining the things which actually you face so it can be uh, considered that the emotions was too overpowering for a speech so i think you can mild it down a little so that the transition of emotions are much more smoother uh, for example uh, i felt that it was more an opera style uh, speech uh so that that was my interpretation maybe i am wrong okay. sir navin sir can explain it all uh, i i uh, agree with what you what you are, what i felt is that uh, you know uh, when you watch movies uh, especially horror movies you find that when it comes to that 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 point when you are going to scream or what they put some kind of a comic or something like that so we need a bit of that in your speech of yours because initially when you talk about your husband and all that i was almost like very uh, sad and all that no then suddenly you come to happiness it's it's a sudden switch so you got to maybe you use pause and let us uh, sink in into the feeling or how should i say uh, relish the feeling and then you move on then again also when you talk about uh, nandini's husband's case and she pleading your this one and all that right 
So there is, you need to give a short pause for the audience to be in that journey with you, you know, like it's down and all that, and then you save it and then, and that's when, so you, the, the pauses are very effective. And that's when Nandini looked at her mother and said, you know, those things. So those, just one second of pause will make a lot of difference because you let the audience come into that stage, you know, like what's going to happen next. Instead of suddenly move and move and then they, they can't, uh, they can't switch gear. Not everybody can immediately switch gear from sadness to happiness to happiness to sadness, you know, you, they need some time, you know, to get into it. So I, I, I that's what Iman Shu is saying. It's, it's not that, uh, this is not a drama that you're doing. It, what he's saying is that, 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 that connection between the audience needs to be done better by doing some pauses in between or even when you know, like suddenly you're sad and then you're suddenly you're smiling. Huh? To us, it's like, how come suddenly <laughs> the sudden change? <laughs> you know, it, you know, it's it, that visual impact on us is too strong. So you've got to find a way to how do you switch it around? Also calm down and then switch. Best is, Jethi, you record yourself. You record yourself and watch yourself. You'll come to know exactly ah, yes. where you're going wrong. Exactly yes. where. That is the, you are the best judge. You will come to know immediately. Record yourself. I suggest that. But this is really a very impactful uh, speech. Yeah. And I'm sure people will come and say, especially the ladies will come and say, thanks for sharing something that we feel and are connected yeah. with. Definitely. No, definitely. It, like, like, it had a strong takeaway message, like, like in this, especially, uh, especially for, for, for ladies. Uh, but, 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 but even, even I could feel, feel it. That is, I mean, not only ladies, but when I also could feel it. I'm sure that that, that you'll track it, <laughs> Jati. <laughs> yeah. Thank um, you. Sir. So Thank the recommendations you. and suggestions were just because beauty comes with follies. So, thank you. such a beautiful speech. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all of you. Thank you so much. Thank uh -huh. you. What time is your contest on Sunday? Uh, it's at 12.15. Unfortunately, I won't be able to make it at that time. Otherwise, I would have oh. definitely loved to attend it. Oh, but yes. At 12.15, 230 It will be about 2.45 here. Why don't you drop the link of the contest in the group for table topics? Whosoever yeah. is possible, okay. they'll attend Jayati. That would be helpful. Okay. Yeah, uh, definitely. Right. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. As soon as they, as soon as they post the link, I'll post yeah. it over here. Yeah. Okay. We, uh, we'll be there to, like, like someone from the group will be there to cheer, cheer you up. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you. Definitely try to make it. And you'll surely yeah. crack this one. Area you will crack. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, right. I I, yeah, I yeah. have to go now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. You also have, have to end it. It's it's past midnight over here in Singapore. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So, okay. So, so thank you, everyone. Okay. For, 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 thank you, everyone, and, and thank you for helping out, Jati. Thank you. 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 Thank